At the risk of sounding old as hell, I never expected video games to look as good as they do now. And while it's developing all the time and getting better and better, there's some crazy looking stuff you can download to your computer right now and marvel at. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks 10 realistic graphics games you can play right now. Starting off at number 10, it's Callisto Protocol. Like, if you're talking about the setting, the game is not realistic, okay? I'm sure people will understand that, but I just wanted to say it just in case. However, the type of realism we're talking about here isn't plausibility, it's aesthetic. And Callisto Protocol is an amazing looking game. The graphics really are the best thing it's got going for it. Unlike most games where the human faces are like the biggest giveaway, Callisto Protocol, total opposite. The animation and rendering of the faces are actually the standouts. The game has some of the best in-game models I have ever seen of human characters. It's not gonna fool you into thinking it's not a video game or anything most of the time, but there's a moment here and there where the facial animation really just looks real. Like at the start of the game where the main guy gets an implant on his neck, the animation combined with the high fidelity visuals make it look almost real. I mean, there's still only so much a game like this can do right now that he's getting an implant into his neck that functions as his health bar. And we just haven't reached the level of technology where there's no uncanny valley at all, but it's really impressive. And number nine is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 from 2022. Some might argue this game doesn't look as good as its predecessor, and in some ways, it's true. The campaign's a little more varied, with a little more location hopping and less darkness to cover things up, so there's parts that look a little rough by its predecessor standards. Uh, on the other hand, there are certain levels that just look stupid realistic, like this early mission set in Amsterdam. It's almost uncanny how closely they were able to model the famous Riverside Street. The detail on display is incredible, and if you don't stop to to look, it's really easy to miss. The level's over in like five minutes. Like, it's so realistic, one of the hotels got mad about it. Even though they didn't use the real name of the hotel, they were like, we don't want to be associated with killing in such a way. It was obviously kind of just to try to get attention, but uh, yeah, they really, I mean, did an incredible job. It's not the only realistic place in the game either. Um, there's the crossing the border mission, which really stands out in my mind because it's super mundane, but they did a great job capturing a slice of Texas. Not to say Texas is mundane or anything, it's kind of the exact opposite, but like in terms of what real life is like versus what video game life is like. And that's the sort of thing you rarely see in games. At number eight is The Hunter Call of the Wild, a few years old, but a recent visual update really did a lot to make The Hunter's graphics shine. It was already a particularly immersive game with some of the best rendered forests out there, but with the improved lighting engine, it makes the game look almost real sometimes. If you've never played it, this is a hunting simulator. That's all you do. You wander around the woods slowly and hunt wild game using tracking tools. A big part of the game is just slowly traveling for points. A to B, which might sound boring, but the parks and forest are filled with such natural beauty. It's one of the most relaxing and contemplative games out there. And believe me, when movement is so slow, it has to look very realistic for us to call it realistic in context with these games. You don't even have to kill anything, though, in this game if you don't want. Some people are more than just satisfied wandering around, taking in the often amazing sights and just hanging out in virtual nature for a a little while. And number seven is Trip FPV, the drone racer simulator. There is already something uncanny about drone camera footage, which actually works wonders for a game like this, which is literally simulating that. Set in some really detailed, but also massive environments, this is a sandbox game that lets you practice your drone piloting skills without the danger of, you know, the physical world. I'm not a drone guy. I mean, I'm a bird of prey. I hardly need drones to fly around and, you know, see things. So I don't know 
how accurate the controls actually are. And from reading the reviews, they're not perfect, but I'm just looking at the graphics, okay? And this game is great at it. it. It does such a good job of capturing the feeling of flying a drone. The sensation of speed, flying through these tight environments, fantastic. And one of the game's most interesting features, the chase camera mode, where you follow along things like skiers and race cars. Looks surprisingly good too. From far away, I don't think it's gonna fool anybody into thinking it's real, but in specific scenarios, it really looks fantastic. And number six is Hell Let Loose, a hardcore World War II shooter. It's not quite as bombastic as other massive scale multiplayer games that are out there, but its interests lie elsewhere. Instead of being flashy, it's all about realism, uh, both in gameplay and in the visuals. Of course, it's a multiplayer game, so there's going to be immersion breaking moments, but there are so many times with this game, uh, you kind of just have to stop and take in what's happening. Uh, when you're part of a massive assault, it can actually feel like hell on earth. The effects combined with the realistic visuals really sell the illusion better than a, any other shooter I can think of off the top of my head. It's not the game with the highest fidelity graphics, but the commitment to realism still manages to create these moments of deep immersion that are just rarely seen in these times, like multiplayer games. Like you don't really feel like World War II shooters that are multiplayer get this immersive and realistic. At number five is Lego Brick Tales. We're at a point in games where inanimate objects are pretty much perfectly replicated and uh, like you can literally scan them. They're easier to make look realistic for that in a slew of other reasons. So the real limiting factor at this point is processing power. Lego bricks are just about perfect for accurate video game recreations because they're small, relatively simple in shape, and they're just chunks of plastic, which goes a long way to explain why Lego Brick Tales is such an amazingly realistic recreation of Legos. Unlike the Telltale Lego games, which mix bricks in with more traditional video game background elements, this game is all Lego all the time, and it's super accurate. These little dioramas look like they're right out of a Lego book, and they have the perfect display and lighting to really make them pop. Honestly, the biggest thing that gives this game away is it sometimes looks too good. Like, nobody's bricks are this clean and shiny all the time. And number four is Dead Island 2. Might seem like a bit of an odd entry, but seriously, check out some of the environments in Dead Island 2. They sometimes look almost real, incredibly good. It's, it's amazing. Visual fidelity was clearly important to these devs, and that's why each area is relatively small but jam-packed with details. The more mundane areas are the most impressive and believable, and that's hard to pull off. Some of the back alleys and interiors of the game's version of Venice Beach look like real places because of how normal they look. Certain dark interiors also look incredible with the flashlight equipped. Most of the time, flashlights in games come off as fake, like they give the whole thing away, but this manages to feel just about right, especially in places like old maintenance tunnels. There's plenty of areas that don't look real because they're filled with zombies and covered in blood, but in the relatively untouched places, in the mostly real world locations you visit in the game, it can look surprisingly good. And number three is Martha is Dead. Horror games are perfect for realism. And while I've seen a lot of these smaller indie horror experiences attempt to make something that feels real, personally, I am most impressed by Martha is Dead. It's a small game, but the environmental detail is so top notch, not just in the dark and horrific scenes, but also in the bright and sunny parts of the villa. Some of the stuff that actually happens in the game is kind of shocking, not something I'd recommend everyone play because the things you do in the game are sometimes legitimately sickening. And it's not a long experience, so it's a lot of that jam-packed into a pretty compressed amount of time. But if we're just talking about visuals, it's undeniably an impressive achievement, especially for a relatively small game like this. 
It's also got a really weird plot, but I think one of the things that'll probably best immerse you into it is that they recorded the voice acting in like Italian. So none of it sounds like voice acting. It sounds like people speaking Italian. I realize that's not a visual aspect of it, but combined with the incredibly good visuals, for some reason I think it really does a lot to make it feel more real. And again, with some of the stuff that happens in this game, it's definitely not for everybody, but wow. And number two is Microsoft Flight Simulator. You really can't do a list like this without talking about Flight Simulator. It's still one of the best, like, all time in terms of realism. Every plane is impeccably detailed. Every switch, every button, every monitor, they're all functional. Huge swaths of the world have been recreated using telemetry data, and major landmarks have been scanned and painstakingly modeled into the game to make them as accurate as possible. But the funny thing about the game is it can switch on a dime from looking absolutely real to looking so clearly fake, depending on where you are in the world. This is a game where you can literally fly anywhere in the real world and certain places have gotten less love than others certain places are definitely just google earth while others are well you've seen flight simulator in those places flight simulator is basically an incredible tourist experience you can see the world from the cockpit of a plane and it just feels shockingly real at times it's getting a few years old at this point but it's still head and shoulders over almost anything else when you're talking about realistic graphics and finally, at number one, it's Unreal Engine 5 demos. Uh, so Unreal Engine 5 can do some absolutely amazing things like Lumen real-time global illumination and Nanite virtualized geometry. But as of yet, we haven't seen a game that takes full advantage of that power. Most games that actually use Unreal Engine 5 are still in development, but like Remnant 2, which is out, doesn't use Lumen. But those are full games, so there's so many other things going into their development. These demos are designed specifically to show off how incredible something is, like this Dune Desert landscape demo, which to call shockingly real looking would be an understatement. It is incredible, but even going a step further is that train station somebody made to look like a handheld phone film video. Like in all seriousness, obviously they did it with camera tracking data because the motion in it is so incredibly realistic looking and that's part of the reason you'd be forgiven for thinking it was just real footage but it's obviously not we're talking about it on a video game list and before we wrap up there's a quick bonus where i think we're obligated to mention it it's red dead redemption 2 which duh you've seen Red Dead Redemption 2. It is an absolutely incredible looking game that even though it's a few years old at this point, just really does it. Rockstar are just the kings. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.